Good afternoon. It is my privilege to join you in this afternoon, being my first time addressing such a young and lovely crowd. Can you imagine 1969? More than 50 years ago, when your grandpa and your grandma were going to school. Yet, that year was the year when the internet was initially conceived, when four universities got connected for the first time. So the internet today is second nature to us. But back then, if you wanted to know what the internet is going to be in the future, it would have been impossible to realize. Today, we're going to try to answer this question. What is the metaverse? However, knowing that the many answers that I can try to provide you today will be only a limited view of what the real metaverse is going to be looking like in, let's say, five years, ten years, and so on. You might have seen your parents using laptops. Before laptops, there were PCs, clunky CPUs connected to monitors with heavy cables, connected to an Ethernet cable to access the Internet. Then in 2010s, we had a revolution. The smartphone came. So all these great applications that were available through PCs or laptops now became available also through a mobile phone. And you could take it anywhere. This development allowed billions of people all over the world to access the Internet for the first time. So the computer phase, we have now the smartphone phase, and now we're moving to the next phase, which is going to be accessing those resources using metaverse devices. So it's a new stage for the Internet. We'll still be able to access the lots of information available in universities, institutions, libraries, museums, but now through a different medium, promising a new level of interactivity through either glasses, for example, that you see in the media, that will allow us actually a new type of experience. And that is the promise, or at least is what most people agree, is the common premise of what the metaverse is going to look like. There was a book that talked about a virtual world by Neil Stephenson. And that was the first time in literature that we learned about this concept of the metaverse, a virtual world, a continuation of a physical existence into this virtual world. That means that if I have friends in the physical world, I can also go to the virtual world and find them. Not exactly my friends, but their avatars. And they will interact with my avatar. In fact, the term avatar was first introduced by this author. A decade later, a company launched Second Life. And Second Life promised to bring us this future of interactivity in our, to our computers. However, as much as the promise included interactivity with friends, the possibility to work in this world, to meet new people, to attend concerts, to go to events, to even do commerce trading there, the promise wasn't feasible at that moment. Why? Because the technology was not ready for this world. One of my son's most popular complaints when he's working in the computer playing his games, either the computer lags, that it's very slow, that it's clunky, that the game gets lost. Can you imagine what was happening 20 years ago? Second Life wanted to offer a new world, yet the technology was so behind, or at least it wasn't that developed back then, that when people wanted to connect with other people, it didn't work that well. So the 3G connectivity of that moment the PCs, the processors at that stage, didn't really help this offer to achieve its potential. And that's the reason why only one million people became users of this futuristic platform. So in certain ways, Second Life was ahead of its time. The promise was in the right direction. However, it really didn't catch on because of the technology of that moment. So it was later that Hollywood actually brought us a more modernized version of this future through Ready Player One. Imagine a future 
where cities are overcrowded. Pollution is rampant. There are no places to go. There's a lot of violence. Where would you go? Well, the premise of this movie is that people actually find a virtual world to go. And they find that in this virtual world, they can meet friends, they can go to parties, they can enjoy experiences that are unavailable in the real world. That was an eye-opening experience for most people because even though there was a book out there that described the potential impact of this new technology, this was a clear view of what that future could look like. Today, three billion people play online games. So just to give you an idea, we are more than seven billion people in the world. And that means that almost 40% of the population already have experience online gaming. Now, there are many popular titles all over the world. In fact, my son started playing Minecraft along 180 million people all over the world. Now he is forgetting about Minecraft, but now he likes Roblox, another very popular platform around the world, joining more than 200 million other users at any given time. Those are some of the most popular games out there, meaning that the kids of today are growing, interacting with other friends and with experiences in that medium. That's not going to go back to the old days when we used to read newspapers, when we used to listen to the radio, watch classical TV. The world is changing and it's not going back. Young generations are growing in a new environment, meaning that they probably won't be having access to the internet through PCs, through laptops, even through smartphones. At the end of the day, that's also a transitional technology that will be giving access to other ways to experience new connectivity options in the internet. So this world that is changing for children today means that there is going to be a new world in a decade or two when these kids will go to school, go to universities, and start working. This change will follow them through all their Lives. So what is the metaverse? The classical definition, it's a collection of virtual worlds that exist, all of them at the same time, and that you are able to visit in the same way that you go home and can go from your living room to the kitchen to the bathroom with no problem. We no need to open new keys or to change avatars, nothing. So this world, it's still in development. What we have today are platforms like Roblox, Minecraft, Fortnite, and many others. However, the real challenge moving forward, it's going to be to get these platforms to connect in the same way that today you can go to the website for Baidu, the website for IGG, without changing any technology. You can just seamlessly travel around all these websites. That is the promise of the metaverse these interconnected worlds easily and seamlessly accessible. So this seamless travel, it's a promise of the metaverse. Of course, for that, these big technology companies that probably your father works at or your mom is going to work every day, they are now in the process of developing these standards. In the case of the internet, we know HTML. It's just the way all websites are built. And we know that if you want your website to look great on the internet, that's how you need to build it. In the same way, for these virtual worlds to be interconnected, we need to find a standard. We need to find a common way to develop these worlds so they can communicate. And you can move seamlessly from one place to another. You can take your assets, your avatar. I don't want to start developing a new avatar from one place and not be able to use in another virtual world. That's still a lot of work to do. Another thing that is going to be important in the metaverse is that there's going to be an opportunity for me to build my own experience. If I go to, let's say, WeChat, I know the different functionalities that WeChat offers. Messaging, channels, live streaming, and so on. That experience has been defined by Tencent. The company uses my data, and they recognize my information. 
in the metaverse, I should be able to build my own experience, meaning that I decide what type of interactions I need to have with this provider. Even more so, developers of these virtual worlds might not always be large organizations, but smaller groups of companies or even associations of users that develop certain types of experiences. So I will be more in control of the type of experience I can enjoy in these new virtual worlds. Property is also going to change in these virtual worlds. Because at the end of the day, when you think about developing your persona in this virtual world, you want also to maintain the same consistency with what you are in the physical world. Let's assume I'm speaking to you today. It's a rainy day in the city, wearing a suit, wearing a tie. That's how I usually present myself in events. At some moment, this event will be held in the metaverse. And equally there, I will also need to dress in a virtual world similar to the one I'm maintaining in the physical world. And for that, I will need to get my own suit, my tie, and so on. So this is a type of asset that I will own in this virtual world. This asset, hopefully, will be used across different platforms. I don't want to be buying my suit, my virtual suit, let's say, in, for WeChat, and then I will need to buy another suit for a live streaming session through Hodon Shin, for example. That's something that will be a pending task for developers to maintain this property, to be able to use these different assets that ultimately you need to buy or develop online through different platforms. So let's welcome these infinite possibilities of the metaverse. If somebody told you 15 years ago, if you want to go from point A to point B, you only need to get your phone, open an application, mention where you are, where you're going, and zoom, there will be a taxi coming to pick you up. You wouldn't have believed it. It would have been impossible to imagine that 15 years ago. Yet, with the advent of 4G at that time, more powerful smartphones, and the creativity of developers, now we have access to many of these tools that allow us to do so. This just to give you an idea that the possibilities that the metaverse will bring are endless, and many of them are still unimaginable today. For the last three years, we have been impacted by a serious disease. And that meant that many times we had to stay at home, interacting with friends online. The same trend was also displayed across the world. And that led actually to an increase in the usage of these platforms. Roblox, Minecraft, Fortnite, and many other gaming platforms actually became very popular, not only for the opportunity to enjoy a game, but also for the opportunity to socialize with fellow gamers who might have been in your neighborhood, in another city, another country, or even another continent. Now, with the advent of virtual worlds, now we also think about virtual goods. And that means that if you have a car in the physical world, it's not out of the realm of possibilities to think that I will also buy, buy a virtual car in these virtual worlds. And it will cost money, really, and might be a lot of money depending on these goods. Right now, people are paying quite a bit of money for these virtual goods. Now, you might tell me, how on earth I'm going to be paying real money for virtual goods, goods that only exist in these virtual worlds? Let me ask you something. Are you familiar with La Mona Lisa from Leonardo da Vinci? Do you think we can buy the Mona Lisa? First of all, it's not on sale. You can definitely see it, enjoy it, in the Museum of Louvre in Paris. If you had to make a big line, and you're going to only stay probably meters from the Mona Lisa, which is protected in an enclosed container. That's all we can do, most of us. However, the Mona Lisa, as many other factories, institutions, or garages, or any type of infrastructure, needs to be insured. That means that the museum has insured the Mona Lisa. And the estimation of the value of this piece of art is 400 million 
dollars. That's just to give an idea that a really a small frame of wood with a beautiful painting from this master, Leonardo da Vinci, is worth so much. And people are eager to pay that much money for a small piece of art. I'll show you with this that in the virtual world, if you find something unique, something original, people will be willing to pay for that. So in the same way that I can buy a car in the real world and I can drive it from point A to point B, I can also buy a virtual car that will take me from my virtual home to a virtual concert by my favorite artist. So events, concerts, any type of meeting that used to be physically held in a physical venue now will be held in the metaverse. And famous artists all over the world have already experienced with this medium. In fact, concerts in famous platforms such as Fortnite having also held hosting 10 million people from all over the world attending virtually for these concerts. So in the same way for concerts, meetings like this could also be held virtually in the future. And that means that you don't have to leave home and take the train or the subway or the taxi to come to this event. You can enjoy this experience meeting with friends from a comfortable place in your home. So virtual venues will give us access to a new world of experiences. Meeting friends, meeting colleagues, meeting clients through these virtual spaces. So even banks, for example, you might help your parents to go to the bank. You might join them when they go to the bank to open an account, to deposit some money, for example. Now, instead of going to a physical branch for a bank, you can go to the virtual version of this in a virtual world. And people there might be able to help you in the same way, either for needs in the physical world or for potential needs in the virtual world. Because if you want to get a credit to buy a car in the bank, now you can get some credit, for example, from the bank to buy a house in the virtual world. So in the same way that we have an economy in the, in the real world, we will also enjoy these possibilities in these virtual worlds. There's an aphorism that says, location, location, location. Let's say, if you want to open a restaurant, do you gonna open the restaurant in a street where there are no people walking, for example, when there are no other businesses? No. Where do you want to open a restaurant? You want to open a restaurant where there are a lot of people in a central square, where there are many avenues passing by, where the transportation means are close by, where all the taxis can get to. And that place where a lot of people will be able to go will be more expensive. You will need to pay more either to buy it or to rent it. In the same way, in the virtual world, there will be some venues, some spaces that will command higher prices, that will be more popular than others. So imagine going to the mall, now you will also go to a virtual mall. And in this mall, the stores will be probably the most popular there. They will need to pay more for renting in that space. This place is called Machu Picchu, and it's the most famous attraction in my native country, Peru. So the last time I went to Peru was 15 years ago. My father, my mother, my brother, all of us decided to finally visit Machu Picchu. And it was a great experience. We were able to see the ruins, to feel the environment, and it was an amazing experience. However, today, it might be very difficult for me to travel all the way to Peru. It's actually very far. However, the metaverse can be the place that can facilitate my virtual visit back to Machu Picchu. Either the government or a private company might be able to create versions of this attraction for a virtual world, creating the opportunity for me to experience the sights, the sounds, even the smells of this place from a comforting place in my home. Furthermore, going to these virtual places will be an opportunity not only to experience new places but also to connect with people equally visiting these places. I can make a date or a meeting with my friends from all over the world to join in these particular visits and not all of them have to be next to me. They can be all over the world yet we can all share this experience of visiting a unique attraction. Now games become a new environment for the new generation. 
So they are no longer watching the news on TV, they are no longer listening to the radio, they are no longer reading magazines or newspapers. Today, they get access to information even through gaming platforms. They get to meet people through gaming platforms. So when they go to the university in a few years, they will also attempt to study using online virtual means. At work, they will also need to be employing these technologies. So if you are a company that wants to reach to these young audiences, maybe a cereal company that wants to sell cereal, delicious cereal, different flavors to kids, where are they going to advertise? In newspapers? Through radio? No way! You have to go to these gaming platforms because that's where the kids are. Where's the audience? The audience of the future will be there. So if you want to reach out to them, that's how you will find it, through advertising in these new, even existing now, and maybe new ones to come, advertising platforms. Stores are going to change a lot. Because for now, you think about buying different things and going to the store. Now, you can go online, you can go to these virtual platforms and realize where you want to buy something in a physical form for a competition you need to participate next week, for example. Or you can also buy the virtual version of these products. So online e-commerce is going to change completely once these platforms become even more mainstream. In the same way, work is going to change a lot. Because now we are going to get so used to, to these virtual worlds that I'm not going to leave that when I think about going to work. Even more so. Going to work is going to change too, because instead of leaving home early in the morning and then spending one hour to go to your office, now work is going to be an experience when I can wake up early anytime, and whether I'm dressing the right way or not, it wouldn't matter, because I will be able to go to my online environment and then be able to interact with my co-workers, which can be located either in the same city, the same country, or, the same, or even another place. So work, it's definitely another area where these virtual worlds will have a big impact in the years ahead. Now let me ask you this. Do you know why in these pictures, most of the time, we only see half of the body, usually the upper part? At the end of the day, it's all about sensors. So you might have seen people wearing these clunky glasses, right? Virtual reality glasses. And these glasses can detect my head movements, my upper body movements. They cannot reach that far to see how I'm moving my legs, my feet. So that's something that is going to improve. In the future, there will be sensors that will be connected through all my legs too. So it, this will actually be reflected in avatars now, reflecting also the movement of my legs completely. So in the future, you will see full body avatars and not only half body like this. Now, if you think about the progress that we will see in the consumer market, like us using virtual reality headsets, your daddy, your mommy will also experience these progresses in, at work. Because now companies to be able to test a new car, I need to build a prototype. And this car has to be tested across different conditions. For example, for protection, how am I going to design a seat belt? How am I going to design protection, these bags, for example, when accidents happen? For that, I need to create a car and destroy it. Because I have to run it against the wall, the car is going to be destroyed, and I have to get a new one too for the next round of testing. With these virtual worlds, I can actually create copies digital twins of these objects, these systems. So my testing will incorporate the same properties of the real environment into these digital twins environments. So I can do this testing as many times as I need without destroying cars. And of course, in the same way that the internet created many opportunities for billions of people around the world, the metaverse will also create opportunities for people in both developed and developing countries. There are going to be many more activities that people will be able to do virtually in these worlds. For example, today, people in Africa might be able to provide services to people in China or to people in America, for example. And those services will be usually paid at the level of, exp level of expense of American cities or Chinese cities. Imagine how much higher that might be compared 
to what this person might obtain in his own, his, her own place in Africa. So there, in the same way that smartphones, 5G technology, allow people in Africa to connect to the internet, to actually skip the PC era and go straight to smartphones, and with that, improve their well-being, the metaverse also promises a radical improvement in their life conditions for billions of people around the world. Instead of building a network of stores, for example, corporations or stores only need to buy, let's say, to build one particular store in one city. And that experience can be incorporated into online worlds, virtual worlds. So people from all over the world would be able to experience the products and services that I provide. So that will give actually opportunities for even small companies, medium-sized companies, to be able to compete in a global market when I don't have to invest millions, a lot of money into developing the real stores, but I just need to buy a place to get a place in a virtual world. And with that, I will equally get access to the whole world as a potential market. Systems have been trained on documents, texts, images, videos that already exist. Yet, these powerful models held by the technology available today help us design something new with a simple request. You can actually come up with a story about a talking pizza and come up with a nice tale that could have taken many hours for a writer to come up with. Yet, these tools can come up with something like that in seconds. So what I wanted to tell you is that, that there's going to be always a new trend. If last year we talked about metaverse and today we talk about AIGC, I assure you that next year there will be a new topic, a new, something in the news, something that people will be getting very excited about. That doesn't mean that these technologies are not connected. In fact, all these technologies always support each other. When we have the metaverse, we think about we need to have a lot of computing power. And that means using GPUs, graphical processing units that we need for our games. We need to have also connectivity, 5G, to be able to display these games in high quality with no lagging. And we also need to develop these virtual worlds. And to do so, we can do it hand. We can learn into code and develop our objects, develop our games. But eventually, we're going to be able to use AIGC, technology supported by AI that can automatically, pretty much, create first version of these virtual worlds. So I only need to enter a sentence there, and in the same day that ChatGPT can create a full text or a summary of a document, I can actually ask Roblox, for example, to create a virtual world for a new game in seconds, without needing to learn how to code. That means that AIGC is going to be key for that development and popular deployment of the metaverse. When you think about using these headsets for more than a few hours, you're going to feel dizzy. You're going to get tired. Can you imagine that you're going to be wearing this the whole day, from the morning when you start working all through the day, and in the evening you want to watch a movie, you also want to continue using these glasses? That's not realistic in the long term. Whether these glasses will change to something that is going to be more manageable, or we're going to enter to a new type of interface. Imagine that time, 4.5 billion years, when we have life in our planet. So from that moment, life has started becoming more and more complex. And today, we have our brains, the result of this evolution over billions of years, from a small cell now to complex human beings. So why do we mention this? Our brain, it's the center of our understanding of the world. And to be able to connect with other people, with colleagues, to be able to understand the world, we need to excite the brain. We do that using computers. We've done that using smartphones. We are doing that now using these VR glasses. In the future, our brains will be connected directly to the internet. So chips will be inserted in our heads. And those chips will communicate 
with an internet directly. No need for VR, no need for headsets, no need for smartphones. It's going to be a new interface. And that's what our kids, you, 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 will enjoy your lifetimes. So as exciting as the metaverse is today, let's realize that it's only a transitional stage of the development of the overall technology. Many technologies have to be in place for these changes to happen. And 20 years ago, we saw Second Life. It brought us the vision of the metaverse, but the technology was not ready yet. Today, we see the advent of 5G. In six, seven years, we will see 6G. We will see new, faster processors, GPUs, for example, to create and render these worlds. In many of these metaverse environments, we see only the interaction of few, maybe 10, 20, 100 human beings. In the future, quantum computing will be used to help this. Because if you want to create a virtual world where millions of people will be immersed, you need to account for the interactions of this person, any person, with any other person. And for that, quantum computing is the technology to bet on. Change is the only constant. So let's stay hungry about the opportunities and challenges that technology will bring us. Thank you very much. <laughs>